hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Love and Marriage DC. This is season two, episode two. And I have to say, it is still feeling like a whole different show from season one. If y'all are not watching it, I suggest you get into it. Okay, it's picking up steam, it's getting interesting, people have their own storylines, it's not boring, so make sure to tune in to the show, or at least tune in to my reviews, okay? Anyway, I know I said I was going to do live, it's been a long weekend, y'all, I kind of got off track with stuff and whatnot, so I'm having to do a couple of reviews as premieres, so y'all will be getting this sometime on Monday, I'm going to also have my Potomac review up to up on Monday as well as a premiere uh, after this one. So if you see in this one, I'm pretty sure Potomac is already set up. So watch that one later. But y'all know first things first, if you have not done so already take a moment and do what? Subscribe to my channel. So we're gonna hold Jaybird, Jaybird, dun 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 and dun. Okay, do not forget to also follow me on social media at Daily's Corner on IG, also on Twitter. That's also that's also my cash app. If you want to send me a dollar, you don't have to, but I'm just saying it's up there. Okay, do not forget to also like the video, comment in the comment section, and hit the little share button. Share it. Okay, main things to do is subscribe like and share that's the one thing well the three things that we youtubers like the most okay it helps our channels anyway okay i'm here hi hi it's every look i put lipstick on i pin my hair back i'm getting braids this weekend y'all so i'm here pinned back all week but again okay hello 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 lipstick a real hoodie okay and I'm on camera. I was going to be off camera, but I said, nah, pop on camera to the people. Let the people see you. If you're not going to be live, you can give them, you know what I'm saying, a little bit of face time. Now, again, this show, new cast, new dynamic, new drama, plus more, okay? And I am enjoying it. Now, first things first, we had two new confessional looks, okay, from Winter and Sherelle. Okay, Winter is back. What was the name of this episode? Okay, she's back. And they're both in some sparkly, sparkly stuff. Winter's in a sparkly dress. And Sher is it Sherelle? I think it's Sherelle. Sherelle is in a sparkly jumpsuit. Okay, thicker than a snicker. Now, Winter. I love it. I'm getting this theme of them, you know, the, the theme is like ball gowns, ball dresses, really fancy, fancy. It's cute. It's a simple color. It fits well. She has the ponytail over the shoulder. It's not too much. You want to always know. I love the hair being up off the shoulders when you poke the shoulder dress off. But I don't mind this one, you know, little train of hair over the shoulder. It's cute. Okay, boobies looking great. Go ahead, Winter. Go ahead. Now, Sherelle, I also like Sherelle. Look, big old earrings, cute outfit. The one arm in, one arm out. It fits her great. It ain't too tight. It ain't too loose. Now, I mean, it fit fit. You know what I'm saying? It fit fit. It Could it be one size a little bit loose? It could be. However, I like it anyway, okay? Now, she also look like some aluminum foil. But I make a lot, I like aluminum foil. I like, look, I put my chicken in aluminum foil. When I bake some potatoes in the oven, I use aluminum foil. If I'm going to make some lasagna in my oven, I put some aluminum foil. So I don't mind aluminum foil because it looks nice. It fits nice. Her hair is cute. I love both of their makeup. So again, two great looks. But let's get into the show. So the episode picked up right where the last one left off. They fight in. Jamie and Big Jamie, y'all are fighting. Somebody call security. Somebody call security. They finna fight. Mama, mama, girl. These two grown men, I'm like, what? And the crazy part is we can kind of tell they're used to kind of fighting. I don't mean like physically, but I can tell they are probably used to having these knockdown, drag out arguments that almost lead to fighting. Almost, and I'm pretty sure at least one time, I'm one time Big Jamie has put his hands on Little Jamie at least once. 
Because, you know, I, girl, because the wife's like, no, y'all stop. What is y'all doing? Now, we had Lil Jamie, who was on the floor crying. Because, look, look, Lil Jamie, in my opinion, was having like a panic attack, a, 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 a upset attack or whatever. And then Jamie came out there. Man, stop faking for these cameras, man. What? I ain't faking. You faking. This ain't you. This ain't you. Man, this ain't. I was like, what is going on? And it's like, Jay, Big Jamie seems, one, Big Jamie was, let me, let me, let me try, I'm try, trying try to be, I already feel like Big Jamie was wrong for even bringing any of this up at this party. I feel like Lil Jamie was not prepared to fuss and argue with his daddy over, you know, they mess. I think he felt like this would be the perfect place for me to be around them and we don't have to, have to discuss the, the, the beef between us or whatever because we're really here for Jason. Big Jamie could not leave, wasn't for long, and now they fuss and fight me. So I think that's why Lil Jamie had this emotional breakdown in the hallway. I think because Big Jamie, who was upset with Lil Jamie, is still in his upsetness. He don't see his son emotionally hurt right now. He see my punk old son who need a job, who always feel like we ain't doing this. Now. Jamie is in his hurt stage and can't see. Now ain't the time for anger. And when you are trying to console or comfort your child, that's not always babying them, but you have to sometimes read the room. And I think both Lil Jamie attitude and Big Jamie's ego was just wrong place, wrong time explosion. And saying that's really what it was, okay? But um, the fact that Lil Jamie, like you know, Big Jamie first said, stop thinking for these cameras, man. I Me mean, get up. I Me mean, get your hand out of my face. What you gonna do? What you? I was like, what, Jamie? What is you doing? Go, Jamie. Go sit your grown boy head down so it. Let it rain to calm your dang on son down. Who need a job? We all know little Jamie need a job. We all know this, but however, his issue ain't a job. Jamie's issue is something that they need counseling for. You hear me? And now they have them separated. Okay, because they both. They both just fussing at each other, and you see security or all this production trying to pull Big Jamie back in arena, and there was another lady who was pulling uh, Lil Jamie back. Cause I'm like, y'all can't be fighting this in this hallway. What is y'all doing? Okay, now Big Jamie sent to, to the to the production door. Man, look, I was gonna knock this. I was gonna knock this man. No, he was in the confession. Man, I was gonna knock that that young man. That young man. I said, not not the young man. That's your son. But Jamie admitted in his confessional that he was going to knock this young man out in this hallway, okay, because he's tired of little Jamie trying him. He keep trying me, and I don't like it. I don't like it, okay? He mad at me and stop talking to me. I don't like it. So then Jamie is pissed, okay? He don't do nothing in life. He ain't doing nothing in life. He not progressing, okay? I'm not his brother. I'm not his friend. He can't keep coming to me like that. So Jamie's upset that one, you talking to me and coming at me like I'm your friend, like I'm your brother, and I'm your father. I will knock your head off. We know a lot of father-son combos around here in, in the world have these knockdown drag out arguments. That don't mean it's good. I feel like when all you teach your child is tough, 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 tough love, it's like they become tough, tough, tough people and then be aggressive. Sometimes just look, let Jamie cry in the hallway, let his mama handle that, and then y'all can talk later when both of y'all are more calm. Because as we see, a crying child and the upset father just causes them to want to fight each other. It's the ego of her, okay? Anyway, he said, we got him that car. The car he driving, we got him that car. We paid a car note, the insurance, okay? Because he ain't working, okay? He do some work for me, you know what I'm saying? But he can't be pissed off at me. Like, we don't do this for him. Jamie's upset because you make it seem like we don't do nothing for you. So I'm pissed. He had the right to be pissed. Little Jamie feel like y'all always on me. Girl, look. <sighs> they need professional people to help them. Now, Jamie and Arena was on um, IG last week, and I meant to post it and I forgot. Got too busy at work. 
And Jamie explained that the reason he gave Lil Jamie money was Lil Jamie at the time was working for him. He said, I, I throw these parties, and when he would help me, I would tip him a hundred bucks a week. So he said, but they didn't play that part on the show. But when I bring up the hundred bucks, because I'm giving him a hundred buck tip for working for me at my events. Okay, well, if he's working for you, you can't bring up that you tip him for work. You, it, it came off as he wasn't doing nothing. And every Friday, because he your son, you give him some money. So most people were were misinformed because we did not have a clear, a clear indication on what you meant by, I give you a hundred bucks every Friday. Well, sir, he's working for you. So if you're paying him for work, I mean, what you want him to do? So I, it wasn't it wasn't an allowance. It was him paying Lil Jamie for working his events on the weekends. Here is a hundred buck tip for for doing whatever. Okay, cool. I don't care. Okay, but if y'all bought that boy a car and paying his car insurance because he ain't got no job, take the car back. Anyway, now little Jamie over there talking to Raina. Okay, he talked to his mama. And you know, he like mama, you know. I didn't get that job because you know I took the drug test. I took this not I did the physical, I did all this stuff, I passed all of that. I didn't get that job, mama, because of my background. It wasn't nothing about what I'm doing now. You know I changed. Okay, and I should everybody out because I was upset. His I think I I think I think I think Lil J point is um I didn't get the job. Because I could not pass the background check. And my daddy probably said some stuff about C, 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 or whatever. And that upset his feelings. And he got pissed. And he felt like you can't complain about me not passing a background check. When you, father, who's a cop, knew I couldn't pass a background check. So ain't no point in kind of saying, nah, nah, I told you so. Now what you going to do? when we all knew that would be hard for me to pass. So I wonder what the conversation was once they found out he did not pass the background check. Did they, uh, you know, try to go at him about, see, you can't, or whatever. Because again, if I'm in trouble, if I did stuff two, three years ago, whatever, it's not current, and I'm doing good right now, I'm trying to keep, I'm, I'm, I passed the drug test, I ain't on drugs no more, whatever, I'm trying to fix my life, and when I hit a setback, if you bring up my past mistakes, that may really piss me off, so I'm wondering if that's what happened, because that's what he was saying to Raina, now Raina said, son, I get all that, cool, I get all that, you, you, I know you change, you doing better, however, son, we love you, we support you, okay, and you can't shut us out because you pissed off about something else. That's our problem. So he ran trying to effectively communicate to her son, we get what you're saying. Well, at least I get what you're saying, okay? But you can't get pissed about little BS and stop talking to us because if something happened, if you if, if you and that girl break up, whatever, we all you got because you, you are a child. We love you. Quit with the BS. Now, Clifton... And Quick come out. Clifton was over the thing about uh, Big Jamie. Quick go talk to Lil Jamie. You can't get mad at another man. Not your father, but another man, okay, for not helping you, okay? I was like, Quick, shut up. Shut up. Because right now, this ain't the time for that conversation. And when Lil Jamie said his confession, he's like, you know what? <sighs> I'm pissed right now. So quick, I don't need that conversation. That that ain't go away. He also said too quick in a moment. He like I didn't get mad at him though. This went from one conversation to the next. But that's my point in saying, Big Jamie should have never had this conversation. Little Jamie here. Period. Not saying that they had the conversation another time. It may have. It may not have gotten so heated. But why risk fighting your son at your other son going away party? That don't make no sense. Not at all. That is the thing to do. You should try to just. You know what? I'll talk to him later. But because you no, know, I'm gonna talk about this now. Well, now y'all finna fight. Okay. Anyway, winter's back. 
Okay, Winter is back. And as she said in the famous words of morning, I'm back. It's really funny that Monique really not back this season. And the whole first season was based around her. And now she gone. And the other folk, well, she almost messed up his lives. They back. You know, because, you know, sometimes people leaving a show can make people not want to, you know, add a show no more. So, you know, kudos to everybody. Come. Kudos to Winter and Arena and and, uh, uh, and Affy for being able to come back around and film season two. So Winter's back. She's riding off the coattails of her song, Sign my papers, give my divorce. I like that song. I'm not married and I'm not divorced, but I mean, you know, sign my papers, okay? But again, she, you know, sang the song a little, a little ditty on the show. She re-recorded it with the producer, uh, Dude Black, and you know, a song came out. I like the song. I, I listened to it. Sign my girl, I'm stop. Anyway, so now she is working with the same producer again, whose name is Black. That is Black's wife. Her name is Sherelle. When season one ended, and I think it was after the reunion aired, uh, Winter was on live on IG with Black and with Sherelle and somebody else because they were discussing the song that they made and how it came about. Sherelle at that point in time was a lot. I said, go watch in the camera at what is she the what is she, girl? What is going on? So Sherelle, from that moment, I'm like, she's a whole lot of something. I did not know they would end up being on the show for season two. Okay. So Winter and Block is making a well, girl block black is making a song good environments. We know that uh uh uh, uh winter called Arena and and we go to Barbies, and there are pretty women who ain't low. I feel like season one, Ashley and Arena were a duo in most in, in, in some instances. And I do feel like in some instances, Arena, I won't say she followed behind Ashley, but because one was upset, the other one would be too. So I do feel like Arena did not give Winter a fair shake because of Monique's interference and also Athie's dis disdain for Winter. Um, Gutter Barbies to me was a funny <laughs> um, nickname for them. People on these shows, on all these realities, they give nicknames. I feel like we can't act like, oh my God, Winter is just so horrible because she called Quick Fun Sass. He is Fun Sass. Ain't I love Fun Sass Snickers? Love Fun Sass Kit Kats? Little Dill Pickle? Ain't nothing wrong with being Fun Sass. Um, you know, she nicknamed uh, uh, Jamie Red Light Special because Lorena said that that man would tell her he was asleep at Red Lights. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So I feel like why make it seem like she's the only person who is doing this when other folks on other shows, they, they kept calling Winter's ex-husband, they kept calling Winter the Winter uh, Swindler. They kept calling her ex-husband name too. I feel like everybody on the show has some kind of nickname about somebody, but got mad because Winter's was more funny. Anyway, so Winter said the whole gutter bar thing about Raina and Athy. <sighs> to me, it's more about Athy than the Raina. Let me let it be. So she's gonna do a song about that. We have not heard the song. We she sang a little a little piece of it. I need to hear the whole thing because what I heard I didn't like. I was like, I, I need to hear the beat. Because I'm confused. So I do wonder what it's gonna be about. Okay, we have to see. Now her and Sherelle talking, and Sherelle is also friends with Ashley. And Carlos said on one of his podcasts or whatever that once Monique left, how the ladies were at odds with Winter, he had to figure out how can we even bring Winter back? Like how would it even make sense? Well, because Winter was working with Block, she was fr she was getting friendlier with Sherelle. Sherelle and Athy are friends. Boom, there we go. 
So that's why the first scene we see of Winter is her with Sherelle um, and whatnot, okay? Now, Sherelle and her confessional, Sherelle talking is a whole lot. She's extra, extra, extra. She like me. I'm extra to her. You know what I'm saying? We just were animated, okay? And I was like, okay. Now, they discuss Winter who wants to make amends with Arena and Ashley. Again, I need everyone to let go of everything that happened in season one because, in my opinion, Monique made their issues more than what it had to be by making it seem like Winter kept talking stuff when it, it was one conversation and stuff just kept going back. I also feel like all of them, Winter, Ashley, excuse me, and Arena were all on social media talking stuff about each other. So again, for me, I feel like if if Arena and Jamie can say stuff about Winter, Winter should be able to say stuff back. If Winter says stuff about uh, uh, Ashley and Quick, they can respond back. They all were literally on Twitter each week tweeting about stuff from the show. So it was weird to me that people, Arena and Ashley, wants to hold this grudge against Winter as if everyone was not doing the exact same thing during season one. I do feel like Winter had the most to make up for. This is based on how, you know, the other cast did not like her or whatever. But I don't think Arena and and, and Ash, you know, y'all can't ice Winter out because the show, in my opinion, won't survive with just y'all too. That's why they had to add so many other people. We see Athy has her good friend on here now. We see Winter's not back on here with Sherelle. We see, you know, Joyce is added on here now. So I feel like it's an ensemble cast. So it's like no one, we too old to be holding on to stuff from season one. Ain't nobody beating nobody up. Ain't nobody got nobody fired. Ain't nobody did that to nobody. That should be so hard after one season of a show that I don't, I don't want to do it. She on the show. She on the show. Let it be. I'm leaving it be. Okay. But again, they, I, I want to make a means of them. They don't want to talk to me, whatever. So Sherelle, look, we know what because you know, saying, look, you spoke about a lady husband, meaning she spoke about quick. And I'm like, but again, are we forgetting that everybody says something about someone? If we, to be honest, before Winter said call quick fun size, they were already joking about Winter being dumb and being swindled and how, how her ex was anything. So they were already discussing her life and what they heard about her via social media or via the people who send people information. That was the that was how we knew Winter had an issue with them with Kevin. So it was like, why are we acting like they didn't say stuff about her life to everybody? Be I'm like, it was good for the goose, she be good for the gander. Oh God! But when Sherelle said, then you, you spoke on their husbands or whatever, you were talking about some receipts and this and that. You just told Arena whatever. Look, <laughs> which is like, first of all, I tried to, I tried, I reached out to Arena to tell her about the receipts. She did not respond, so it is what it is. Look, we saw last season that happened um, on the reunion. No matter, no, before the reunion aired. Winter, because after they had filmed the season, Winter reached out to Arena because she was getting DMs. Now, let me be clear. I'm not on a TV show. I'm not. However, I'm a blogger. I'm a YouTuber or whatever. People literally DM me stuff. They literally email me stuff. I don't read it. I don't. But people will send me stuff. And I'll be like, damn, really? Martel did what? I don't, because I, one, I don't know who you are. And I'm not the person like to spread lies. And I don't have time to figure out what's true or not. But if someone sends me something and I know you, I'm going to say, girl, we should talk. Because they, they sending me stuff. You might want to see this. 
However, Arena was already off put by Winter. So anything Winter said to her came off shady, mean, on BS. But I feel like we not going to act like we know for, we just saw on Potomac how Giselle was sent a photo of Karen six months ago. And they held on to say a photo, and then she sends the Robin, and Robin then pulled it out. So let's not act dumb, y'all. We have to understand that when you're on these shows, and if you're a YouTuber, people, they, they literally do send us stuff about these people. Somebody just sent me something about, oh, who was it? Girl. Um, but I'd be like, I ain't, I ain't getting in that. Mm -mm. I ain't doing it. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. Because I ain't gonna nope, I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> Again, I'm very careful on not starting rumors. Ain't nobody about to sue me. No one. So I'm not surprised that someone was DMing winter dirt on arena or ashley or jamie or quick not surprised at all so i don't get why it's such a big issue okay anyway uh ashley wrote a book do we care not really nah. because y'all know ashley still is not my cup of tea i still feel like like i think she's a nice person in general but she's also a bitch but she says she's a bitch. I didn't say that. She said that season one. I feel like she has a mean girl spirit in her. And she likes holding on to that. Okay. But she wrote a book called Do That Stuff. But it's a cuss word. Okay. I feel like writing a book called Do That Stuff. Writing a book that people can't say on TV is stupid. Do it. Do it, sister. Do it, friend. Do it, girl. Do that stuff. But saying do that, sh I feel like, girl, it can't be said in some places. And if you have a, a high schooler, if people in high school want to, you know, have you around there to help talk to the girls about depression and getting through whatever that you got through, do that. Sh it's not going to be in the, in the school library. I'm just saying you, when you are thinking about doing stuff, think about marketing. Because do that shit can't we can't read that in the schools, no ma'am, no ma'am. Anyway, but she said it was her way of it's her story of healing, her story of depression and what she went through. Now she owns something called a Be More Lifestyles. I'm like, a lot of them are from Baltimore. Why is this? First of all, because Love and Marriage DC ain't DC and Baltimore different. I feel like DC. In Baltimore are two different entities. Okay. So for the, the fact that I think Arena, no, I think it's maybe it's Arena, Joy, and 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 Athy, I think they're all from Baltimore. But what girl me that be? Anyway, um, the lady asked her about, oh, how you think Monique doing or whatever, or her and Chris separating, what's going on? And when she said, Oh, I don't, I'm so shocked, girl. Look. If you did not know they had you on the, I mean, for your book too, but they also want to ask you about Monique and Chris because at this time, this this was being filmed when the rumor came out they were divorcing. And Monique and Chris said, no, we're not divorcing. So, of course, people want to ask the question was because everybody wanted to scoop because at that point in time, no one knew that Chris and Monique were not going to come back on season two. Hell, Athie didn't even know, okay? I was caught off guard, girl. I can't believe that. That was weird to me. I'm like, girl, welcome to the world of business. Welcome to the world of reality TV. When any star is doing an interview, they're going to ask you about your co-host, not co-host, your co-stars, okay? I'm going to that be. But she said, girl, I don't know. I ain't talking to Monique about a week or two or whatever, so I'm not sure. But me and my little, we good. That's what I don't know. Um... The fact that no one had talked to Monique is still so weird to me. Not weird, but I feel like we just know for a fact y'all was not really friends. Because y'all ain't discussing the show. Y'all not trying to figure out what's going on. No. 
Okay. Anyway, that was all. Over at the Tyler household, okay, with Arena and Jamie, the girl, the fat girl, Jamie, fell down them stairs. When I, girl, I said, look, y'all can't be wearing, y'all can't be wearing them like them, 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 them Gucci slides. I'm thinking they don't have no grip because he straight slid, okay? I'm like, is he okay? Lord, somebody, someone, please call 911. The alleged assailant <laughs> is fine for what? I was like, is he okay? He may be hurt. Somebody called the Amalam. Somebody called it. Girl, I said he just slipped. I was, look, them Gucci slides, they just don't have that much grip. So please be sure. Okay, to not wear them too fast running down your stairs. Because what can happen is your whole life, your whole life could flash before your eyes. And then you at the bottom of the stairs wondering how I get down here. What happened? Lord, my backbone hurt. My tailbone hurt. My toe feel broken. Okay, because I could not, you know, I, I slipped about four or five stairs my whole life flat before my eyes. Can't believe it, Lord. Help me. Anyway, he made it alive. He's fine. I mean, he's sore, but he's alive. Okay, so Arena and Jamie chit chat, okay, about who you know it is about little Jamie. Okay, now Arena, I can't believe y'all knucklehead was around here about the fight. I can't believe that shit. I say, Arena, believe me. Believe it, okay. Now, Jane, like, well, I wasn't gonna fight him, I'll let him know he can't play with me, he can't try me, okay. I, I wasn't gonna really fight him, okay. But I would if I had to, I would, okay. So, Jamie's he's done supporting J, uh, 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 big, J, I'm sorry, big Jamie said he's done supporting little Jamie. I'm done, it's over, leave me long, okay. I'm tired, he needs to grow up and man up. Look, I think it's true, but I also feel like. Lil Jamie's issue is more than just him not being financially stable, him not having a job. I do feel like there is some depression in him and he needs some good old help. Okay. Now I ran like look, Jamie feel Lil Jamie feel like you don't like him. Okay, that's how he feels. And while Big Jane, well, you know that ain't true. So I know that. However, however. Kids these days have their own feelings, okay? And if they feel that people don't like them, they can harm themselves, okay? It's not even about if it's not true. If they feel people don't love them, if they feel like no one likes them, you know, kids these days harm themselves. And, and I just I don't want that to happen, okay? Because, you know, it don't matter if it ain't true. It's how they feel. So it worries me all the time. I don't, I don't want nothing to happen to our son. She was crying, you know? And... The fact that Big Jamie still don't get it, his response, well, I didn't, I didn't do that. You know, it wasn't my fault. I didn't start that. It ain't about who started it at all. Because the rain was saying, like, you can't, you can't just always yell at him. Because to him, you you this is the, the kicker. We all agree, Lil Jamie need to grow the fuck up. We all agree he needs a job. However, I also see he feels a certain kind of way that depresses him. And I think Arena sees that too. Big Jamie don't see that yet. He feels like, well, he might, you know, he because he, he even tweeted and said, you know, I think I love my kids. You know, what do you say? He said, let me see, Jamie Tyler, because I want to. Y'all know I don't, I don't follow that man. And I'm proud, girl. Of course, the one time I'm trying to find some. Oh, here we go. Boom. Um, I just want to put what he put. It was something to the effect of that, you know, no matter how he may react, he loves his kids. And he thinks the kids know that. And I said, huh? You need to make sure, cause to say I think my kid know that, you know, it's like no, 
I want you to know that you have conveyed to your kid that you love them. Um, he, girl, he tweets so damn much, Lord Jesus. Girl. Oh, Lord Jesus. He got a lot of, I, I, got, I can't go through all these things. Um, it's a girl, he got too many tweets. Go to that man, I did that his Twitter page. But he was saying, like, you know, at the end of the day, I love my kids to death, and I think they know that. And I'm like, but that's the key. Lil Jamie may not. You may think he does. And the Raymond's point is to Lil Jamie, he think, oh my dad don't like me because they'll yell at me. Um, even if he deserves a yelling, he just takes it differently. So I like the fact that that Raymond's look, y'all need some professional counseling. Because you don't see his point, he don't see yours, but I can see him feeling some kind of way and being depressed, and I don't like that, okay? So Jamie agrees to go to count. They want to go to family count or whatever. I said, good, okay? Because that's what needed, period. Now, Lil Jamie still needs a goddamn job, okay? Anyway, another I don't, look, Ashley, girl... I don't want to be mean and say I don't care about nothing she did this episode to the end. Uh, but her, her little friend Alicia, her, my best friend, is talking or whatever. Uh, she brings up how her mama, not her mama, her sister wants to discuss with her how they mama going to take her book. Because in her book, she brings up that when she was 16 years old, her mama moved out the house and moved in with her boyfriend. And at that point, Ashley kind of just raised herself. And when she says stuff like, you know, and she don't see nothing wrong with what she did. As if her mama felt like, when well, you 16, you, oh, you you think you're grown you, or you are grown, you can live by yourself and I can move out. And I'm like, you can't, I'm like, at 16? Girl, now this is the question. I, look, I'm not trying to make it through to her mama. Was, did she like leave all the kids in the house by themselves to just raise themselves? Like, with the father there? Like, what kind of parent... Girl, look, this is my thing, too. Parents are human. They do make they make dumb decisions. Um, so I, I do want to hear more about whatever went on. But I was bored watching her talk with her friend about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I do want to see her and her mom have a conversation about what her mom did and how it affected her. Because at 16, for your parent to leave you, like, that has to be heartbreaking. That might be why she's a mean bitch now. Because she's still mad her mama left her at 16. That could really be about, that could be, be the, uh, a reason as to why she has this, I'm, I'm nice, but I'm a bitch attitude. Because she still holds on to people leaving her. I don't know. Anyway, uh, the fact that they got tattoos, it was, look, they got Matt, not even, they got a best friend tattoo. Had a tattoo or come over there with his equip with his table, got all set up. They got a smiley face. And not they got two dots in the in the smile line. That's it. I was like, girl, get up again. I'm like, y'all up here boring us getting a freaking two dots and the lip on y'all middle fingers. Get out of my face, okay? Now, they quickly talked about Joy and how her and Alicia can be getting along because, again, Alicia and, and um, Ashley kept questioning Joy about her, you know, speaking on the panel at the Steve Harvey Foundation. I'm a girl, get over it. Steve Harvey and his wife, uh, Marjorie, asked her to come speak. She did it. Y'all were being mean, girl. Trying, you ain't a mama. Girl, I, so what? She, she was hired for a job. Okay, the fact that they then talk about they they have a podcast called Fun Time Moms and they're having an event. However, even though their podcast is for Fun Time Moms, their event is for everyone. I'm like, y'all having a Fun Time Mom event for women who aren't moms, so anyone can come, even if they're not a mom. Oh, but what's the difference? Y'all have an event for people. Call fun time moms event for y'all because y'all are moms, but y'all are allowing other people who are not moms to come and partake. So, ain't that the same with Steve Harvey and them having a full uh, foundation gala event or whatever and having all kind of people attend and speak? I'm gonna leave it be. I'm gonna leave it be. Now, Joy and Arena talk. 
okay, at uh, Rita's house. Now, Joy brings up how she's known Raina for over a year, you know, since she got with Clifton, because Clifton and Jamie were already friends. So they've known Clifton or whatever, and then once her and Clifton got together, her and Raina became good, good friends, and they've been hanging out or whatever. Good time. Hey, by all. Now, they do discuss Ashley and, and Alicia, but they're best friends. They're best friends. We know. Anyway, um, even Joy bringing up how she felt kind of, you know what I'm saying, a little weirded out by Ashley and Alicia coming at her about her not being a mom, but speaking at an event. You know, it was weird or whatever. I mean, they were kind of dealt to me. Okay. Clifton felt offended, too, seeing her roll her, seeing Ashley Roll her eyes at me. Okay, he was ready to go. Okay, he was mad. he was upset. But again, it's fine. You know, it's the first time I met her. So I'm going to chalk it up to, hey, first time or whatever. But if it happened again, at that point, it's a pattern. Okay, and I will address it at that point. Now, Raina was like, girl, you know, look, you just address things as they come. You know, just talk. Just talk to her. I was like, mm, I don't know. Okay. Even though Raina do say she don't feel like, Alicia and Ashley gang up on Joy, but she see how Joy felt that way, but in their little group or whatever, they ask questions. But sometimes questions can be dumb, okay? Now, Ashley and Alicia have this Think Pink party for the Fun Time Moms podcast, meaning everyone had to come dressed in some kind of pink. Now, Ashley came as, I don't know, someone in pink with blonde hair. Was she, maybe was she, was she supposed to be a blonde Barbie? I don't know. Uh, Arena came in a gutter Barbie bomber jacket. I said, "Girl, come on now." Arena was cute. I like, I like, I like more what Arena had on because it looked like it was a an outfit. I just did not understand Ashley in the blonde wig. I, was, I just, I think that threw me off. I don't know. Uh, she also brought up how her and Ashley made money from Garter Barbie t-shirts. Thanks, Quinter. And I'm like, I think people will buy a Garter, a Garter Barbie jacket. Who, Whoever, somebody better have trademarked Garter Barbie. Because I'm saying you can probably make some money. Okay. Now, Joy came in a like dominatrix type look with in pink, whip and all. And then Sherelle got there in a pink bathing suit, uh, um, a wedding veil, or maybe some line, a, a, a thin lingerie jacket, and some pink boots. I was like, okay, it was, I didn't get the wedding veil, but again, it was, you know, it was a think pink thing, so, you know, this pink, whatever, okay, and come on in, thick thighs, okay, and thick waist, you know what I'm saying, come on through, okay, come on through, anyway, when Ashley goes to introduce Sherelle and Joy, Joy's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, hi, I said, what, what's going on here? What happened here? Okay, so we then find out there is some scuttlebutt foolishness in between Joy and Sherelle. Now, I don't know if Sherelle fully knows is some shit going on between her and Joy, but Joy, sure enough, was like, get out of my face. So Joy says how back in the day, she was in a group, okay, called Mamba Sauce. We see right here, Mamba Sauce. That was a group back in the day. The group also included Sherelle Huff and Black. That's the guy behind the guy behind the, the two lit up people on the end is you know is uh Joy and Sherelle's husband Black back in the day. Joy says, okay, the band crumbled. It crumbled. Okay, and she lives for music. Music is her whole life. Okay, and that's when a person in power take that away and ruin stuff for not only her, but for the rest of the Mamba Sauce group because he's on some selfish stuff. He was, she said he made some selfish decisions that crumbled the group. It ruined things or whatever. And when somebody does that and ruins us and the group, I have an issue. I have an issue with them. I may have some hate in my heart for them. I said, oh, die hating your heart. Keep your heart, three stands. Keep your heart. But Joy said, yes, Someone who ruined the group we were in for their own selfish reasons because no one person is above the group, but he thought he was, okay, based on bad decisions. I'm pissed. I will forever be pissed at him for that. 
also anyone attached to him. If anyone attacked him as around me, I removed myself from being around them. And she walked away. I said, Lord Jesus. But they sit around here and not everybody having a conversation because Sherelle sees the gutter Barbie uh, uh, jacket. You know, Athy brings up how you don't call us gutter Barbies. I know something about that. So Sherelle then holds to her word to tell everybody, hey, Winter's writing a song about gutter Barbies. And my husband's writing it. And so she first told Ashley. And Ashley, like, it was, it was a, a diss track? No, my husband don't write diss tracks. Okay, Black wrote it. He don't write no diss tracks. So, girl, calm down. Why are you so extra? extra? She was just so animated. and Because I don't do that, okay? He don't do that, okay? That ain't what it is. And Winter wants to make amends with y'all. She wants to talk to y'all. And she wants to say, yeah. I was like, girl... This, I would first of all, this could have really been a gutter Barbie video shoot for one, but now everybody has this conversation, um, about a song that no one has heard from a person they don't want to talk to because winter ain't there, joy don't know winter. Uh, Athy and the Raina call winter snowflake, they wings her name, so why is this even a thing? I get Sherelle saying, Ashley is my friend. I'm getting friendly and getting to know Winter. So I don't want to be holding stuff back or whatever. I don't care about who popular. I don't care about I, all, I, all I care about who real. Who got my back. Okay, that's girl, calm down. Calm down. Just stop. Okay. I also get her trying to have them all have a conversation. But it's just like, girl, you're doing too much. And again, no one has heard the song Go to Barbies. Now, Joy did say, I have never heard of a song called Go to Barbies. And it can't be positive. Go to Barbie is a diss if I ever heard one, okay? Um, Arena then said, did you know that you know she's been trying to talk to me? Arena also feel like, I think Sherelle playing both sides. Why bring up Ashley at, I'm sorry, why bring up Winter at this event? It doesn't make sense. Now, Arena said that Addy also feel like, is she playing me? Because why I come here and do that? Why is she come here telling me, well, Winter said, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Is she being messy? Well, probably. But, you know, Arena brings up how she tried to contact me on DM or whatever, saying she got some receipts, but I did not respond, okay? And now she's sending you here to relay her messages. I don't know. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to talk to her and see what it is. Now, I want to uh, ask you this. You know what, uh, Sherelle? Go out front and make sure everybody got their drinks. I see it. She, is she the hostess? I'm a guest. Leave me alone, okay? Last week, we see Winter and Arena meet up. Let me make a couple things clear. We already know that Winter had reached out to Arena privately, off camera, when the show was not filming about this exact same information. So if anyone say, why say this on TV? Why bring it? Ask Arena. And I mean, and I like Arena. I like Winter. I like them both. I really want them to move past this. But what I don't want people to do is feel like Winter been holding this stuff and holding in dirt and wait. No, she this came up at the reunion last time because she has reached out to Arena when they were not filming. They then brought it up on camera. And Winter still did not even say what it was then. Well, here we are. Um, I feel like neither Arena or Winter had bad intentions. I do feel like Arena is holding on to her aggravation with Winter. From season one. I also want Arena to let that go. Like, because holding on to it, it's just negativity. Okay? Um, if someone I don't know be like, look, I ain't trying to be on no BS, but let, we got we got to work together on the show. Cool. I will allow you to let me see if you keep being messy. But I would not be rehashing and staying upset about nothing from season one, in my opinion. Now, Winter said, look, I hate how things went now. I hate how stuff went now before. I wish that you would have reached out to me sooner. Or, I'm sorry, reaching back out to me. 
meaning I wish you would have responded to my stuff then because I was not trying to be messy. Now, where did we have moved past to call them the names or whatever, but you was then on Carlo's show and you said you think me and Jamie were cheating on each other. I was like, so that made her mad. I said, but ma'am, the world thought that. <laughs> we all thought Jamie and Arena had stepped out in some kind of way based on what they both said in season one. So it's weird to me. Is to me, it wasn't to me. It wasn't Winter making up something out the blue. You had said you had caught stuff back in the day. You never caught him sex having sex with somebody, but you you believed he was cheating in the past. He said he thought you were too, based on conversations you had with other people. Y'all both made it clear that y'all both suspected the other one of stepping out in some kind of way, in some kind of way of being unfaithful, but y'all stayed together. And Carlos, messy as Carlos, was the one who asked Winter, do you think that, you know, Arena and Jamie or oh, Cheetah, each other, I think they both stepped out and they stayed together, whatever. So I was like, girl, bye. You, it was based on what y'all said on the show. Okay, and Winter then said, well, I'm sorry for answering the question because I wasn't trying to be offensive to you, but I get you were offended. I'm sorry. And the crazy part be, as Winter is saying sorry for what she said to defend by, Arena just kind of doesn't take it in to move past it. Why are we still fussing? She then said, oh, and you was on social media, whatever, speaking of this, I'm like, ma'am, all your last season, all of them was always on Twitter back and forth in it. So again, my issue is what is good for Jamie and Arena and Quick and Athy should also be good for Winter. Why is it that y'all don't bring up how y'all be saying stuff and y'all all be going back and forth with each other? It's not just Winter on social media blindly talking about the cast. Y'all all was saying shit. From episode one. And when like, well, y'all keep telling what I say? If I did that, if I kept a receipt on y'all, I would have a CVS, I would have a CVS receipt. It would be long receipts. Because everybody keep each other's names in everyone else's mouth. And even I saw that. They will all do interviews. They will all be tweeting. No one, Winter not into that. Monique not. Chris, not, not Chris, not Chris, uh, Jamie, Arena, Abby, and Quick. All of them were tweeting and talking about each other in every interview, in their post. So anyone making it seem as if it's only winter is on bullshit. I have the right to respond to you. And I, we all just talking about the show. I mean, they all season, they was, this, this is all their first season. I'm BDB. And the rain, look, I thought you was being messy or whatever. I thought you was being winter. If I if it was friends in real life, I would have, you know, reached out to you about, you know, don't do that, okay? And so I wasn't being messy. I'm only messy when I'm responding to stuff, okay? But you was the one telling me you had info, info on me. Girl, I said, not a simple. So, again, this is what started happening off camera in the DMs. Arena and Jamie brought it to the reunion. Winter then says right here, yes, because I was trying to tell you what people were sending me because I didn't like it. And but you not listen, just pause and listen. I was trying to tell you somebody in your circle was sending stuff out, running their mouth. As a mom, I felt bad because they were sending stuff to me about your disabled son, and that disturbed me. I want to reiterate, Winter DMs Arena. When the show was not filming, saying, hey, people are sending me stuff about you and your family. I got some information I want to show you. Arena said, I'm not going to respond because she said her own mouth. I thought you were being messy. And she's like, no, I was disturbed by what they sent me. And I was trying to tell you because I feel like it's somebody from your circle. So, Arena, well, what was it? 
what was said. Because who does that? Who says stuff about it the same time? I don't know. And that's my point. I agree with you. Winter is literally agreeing with Arena, saying it's crazy for anyone to send information about someone's child. So I'm trying to tell you what someone is doing. And then Arena said, well, what did they say? Winter said, here. She tried to give her the phone for Arena to see it for herself. Read it for herself and her doctor said, No, you tell what it say. Say it out loud. What it say? Read it out loud. And what, oh, it said, Well, it said that Arena and you, I'm sorry, it said that you and Jamie didn't raise Jason. Jason lived in some in, in some kind of facility in Baltimore for disabled kids. And he didn't come home until he aged out. And at that point in time, you and him moved your mama in, okay, to help with Jason. While you and him still ran the streets, I was like, girl, <laughs> again, that's something someone sent who knows them. And we know on these shows, when folks get on these shows, the haters come out the whoop, and the haters will send information to people they are at odds with to use against them. And I'm like, do people not get? She didn't want to use it on the television. That's why she talked or DM'd Arena. Off camera. I'm just saying. And even here, when she was giving her the phone, like here, you can see for yourself. I ain't got to read it. See it. She, no, read it out loud. So, girl, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Someone's, see, that is, but that is the exact kind of messy stuff that people send us. And they do that because they feel like, okay, y'all, their eyes. Okay, let me send you some dirt on her. You then use that against her. Ha <laughs> ha That's what they do. The same way that somebody who was banging uh, wine allegedly sent the TikToker dude, you know, info on wine and Robin. People do that all the time. It's not abnormal. <sighs> anyway. That's how it ends with Winter reading as Irena asked her what someone sent her via DM about them not raising Jason. Jason being in some kind of facility. And so they came make it seem as if they had a hard life raising him if he was sent somewhere else for disabled children. Now, I did see Irena had comment, commented on Twitter saying, my kids is grown, so me and my husband, we can hang out. I feel like y'all can. And to me, that also made me feel like, is there some truth to that? Not saying they're bad parents, but it's like, yeah. You know? I'm trying to see Raina. I think it's Tyler. I feel like if you need help with your child who happens to be um a disabled child, I feel like that's fine. But I do think if someone is sending that information to someone they feel that you are that you are that you are at odds with to use against you to make you look like a bad parent, I will be happy that someone told me, hey, this is what someone's saying. See who it is who sent this to me and do you know them? Are these your people? Because I would not want someone spreading those kind of rumors about me and mine. And so I told you and yours. But again, you know, we're going to see them argue about it or whatever. But we'll see where it goes. Anyway, y'all, that's it. Okay, I got to go. I have to watch. It's 2 a.m. right now. I have to watch Potomac. I'm going to watch Potomac and try to either record it tonight. If not, I may have a live um, at 9 p.m. with it. If I if I don't have the energy to watch it and review it and get to bed on time. Because, again, it's 2 a.m. right now. But do not forget to like the video, comment in the comment section, share the video, follow me on social media at Katie's Corner on IG, also on Twitter. Y'all know to subscribe to my channel. Okay, I hope y'all enjoyed. Until next time, I got to go. I love you all. Be safe because y'all are loved. Bye.